Let's see just the ending over here in the words of Rav Tzadok HaKoyim. Now he's, now remember, Rav Tzadok HaKoyim is saying um, a very powerful idea. And that idea is that Hashem decrees things that are going to happen. And it's inescapable. If Hashem decrees it, and He prophesizes, and He tells it over in His Torah, or in Tanakh, anywhere in the, in the Nevi'im, in the, in the Book of Prophets, He says this is what's going to happen, it's going to happen. Hashem can't say something will happen and it's not going to happen, then it's not really prophecy. So if Hashem tells Avram Avinu, there will be a nation that will rise up against you and they will enslave you for 400 years and eventually you're going to go free and I will punish that nation as well, it's going to happen. So the Egyptians were already, it was foretold, it's going to happen, there's going to be a gullus and exile in Egypt and it's going to be not, it's not going to be pretty for the Jewish people. So then, as we know, the Rambam asked the famous question, so then why should they get punished? They were just doing the plan of action that Hashem was saying. Why should they get punished? Hashem said, you're going to, a nation will rise up, they're going to enslave the Jewish people, they're going to, and they're going to get punished in the end. I get punished for, for fulfilling the prophecy that Hashem already said to Avraham Avinu thousands of years ago, why should I get punished? So, Ratzal HaKain says a fascinating idea. And that is that there are times in a person's life where the Yetzirah takes over control, the evil inclination, and a person cannot resist what is going on inside of them. On that says Rav Tzadok HaKayin, you will not be punished for the action that you do. Because you are what's called an honest, you are under duress in that particular situation. You have no control over yourself in that case. This is really what... Rabbi Russell was saying over, you, nobody, you hear on Shabbos, but you didn't hear what he said yesterday, that he went through a very lengthy discussion about the way that the, the brain works when it's, when it's traumatized. And it comes out at the end of the day that all of the kids that are what's called going off the derech, that are no longer really keeping Yiddishkeit, the way that they were raised in their house to keep Judaism, those kids that are angry with the rabbis and those kids that are having problems over here and the kids that are this. So their brain, because of whatever trauma they went through, whether it was sexual trauma, molestation, whether it was learning traumas that they don't, they don't learn the right, they, their mind's not as, as, has some learning issues, whether it was a many, many numerous different things that t- took place in their life that caused emotional trauma, so their brain literally is not working and functioning normally anymore. And therefore, their reactions and their anger and their angst and their, everything that they go through, it's not that they really have control over that. And they're what's called honest, they're under duress, or at least karavla honest, they are close to being under duress, and therefore, the crazy and the wild things that they do, they cannot even be held accountable for it. Because they don't have control. And that's what Rav Tzadok is saying over here. There are certain times in a person's life, the Yetzirah is so strong and grabs a person so powerfully, I have no control. And I'm under duress. I, I just did a terrible sin, I'm not going to punish you. Because it was out of your control to do the right thing under the circumstances. However, says Rav Tzadok HaKoyim, even if the Yetzar is very strong, but if you then begin to attach your own motivation and you extract your own pleasure from that which was taking place and you put your own effort into what's going on, on that, says the Kodesh Baruch Hu, you're not under duress. So if it's grabbing you and you have no control and you get sucked in and then you look back, whoa, what did I just do? Okay, so you're under duress. But if while it's happening that you are fulfilling the prophecy that HaKadosh Baruch Hu decided there will be a nation that will rise up against the Jewish people for 400 years and there's nothing you can do about that, but then you're going to invest cruelty. You're going to invest harsh behavior. You're going to invest insidious ways into that. That Hashem didn't prophesize. That's up to you. For that you're going to get punished. And that's why the Egyptians, even though there was already, there was already prophesied, there's going to be a nation, and they are going to rise up, and they are going to do terrible things to the Jewish people, but they invested so much of their wickedness into that, for that they have to get punished. You cannot avoid that. 
So on one hand, there's something called an honest, which means that you are under duress. And if you're really under duress and you're not involved in it at all, then we say, you know what? You're exempt from that, whatever sin you did. But if you invest yourself into it and you put your thoughts into it and you put your mind into it and you put your desires into it, even though that it's already programmed that this is going to happen, now you're going to be held accountable. And that's why the Egyptians were held accountable for what they did. Because, the, the, again, the sin of the Yet Sahara is such a thing that is going gonna, is gonna to be is, is powerful in and of itself, but when you invest yourself, you're no longer, you can no longer claim that you are, you know, like when they, when they come to court, and the, and the guy was, he's like a mass murderer. And then they start coming up with all the claims. Well, you know, he came from a broken home, and his mother was a drug addict when she was, when she was pregnant with him, and the father had 13 women that he was a mistress with, and he grew up in violence. So what do you expect from the guy? And he grew up with Fortnite. Like, what do you expect from the guy? You know, so now he's 25 years old. He's a recluse. He's sitting in the home watching the internet all day long. He's, he hates the world. He hates himself. He hates everybody. So he could go to the pawn shop. He bought himself a sawed-off shotgun, and he blew away 16 people. What do you want from the guy? So now the court has to decide. Well, was he really under duress? Like, is it really true the guy had no control over himself? He takes a sawed-off shotgun, walks into a school, kills 16 kids. He really had no control over himself? It's like, is that the next thing? So you have a hard life. So your mother's a drug addict. So your father is a, is a, is a, is a thief. So you're a recluse and you're playing Fortnite all day long. So is that the next step? Go and kill 16 people? Like, is that, the, is that the under duress? Like, I have no control over myself? So you have to be a big person to be able to say that that person had no choice. Like, he, of course he's going to go and kill people. Of course. So the, the, the Rav Tzadok is saying that there is things that have been determined already from beforehand, and you cannot escape that. But how you're going to deal with this situation, that's still up to you. How you're going to invest yourself in it, that's still up to you. You're going to enslave the Jewish people, there's no doubt about it. But you're going to be cruel and vicious and harsh and do the most wicked of things, like take babies and stuff them into the walls of the pyramids or the cities that you're building because you ran out of bricks? And take the babies and throw them into the, into the, into the Nile River and kill all the boy babies in, just like that? Or are you going to just do your job, put them under slave labor, build a few pyramids and call it a day? What are you going to do? So says Rabbi Tzaddik, you did what you did, and therefore for that you're going to be punished. Because you went beyond the call of duty over here, in the, in the riches and the wickedness that you projected upon the Jewish people. Now so he concludes like this, now when Hashem predicts that the Jewish people will arise in sin, He's predicting that there will be, there will be some who will sin for their own pleasure, and that will be the accountable element. Shem predicts that the Jewish people are going to get into bad shape and they're going to sin against Hashem. And therefore, there's going to have to be, uh, what do you call it? There's going to have to be a punishment that will come to them. So says, says the, says the, um, says Rav Kayin, and there's going to be these Egyptians that will rise up against the Jewish people and they will do the wrong things over here. So sins that they sinned for their own pleasure, they were sadistic, and they got pleasure watching the Jewish people suffer in pain. Uh, the, the Nazis, what you think the Nazis... Let, let's say, let's say, it's hard to understand, but let's say that it was decreed in Shemaim in the heavens that there's going to be a Hitler, there's going to be a Nazi Germany, and they're going to come and wipe out six million Jews. Let's just say. So, did they have to do everything as sadistic? and as wicked, and as evil as they did? Did they really have to kill six million Jews in gas chambers? Did they have to hit people, and beat people, and shame people? Did they have to kill babies in front of their mothers, and mothers in front of their children? Did they have to do that? That they didn't have to do. What did they have to do? Whatever was the decree was in heaven, that was coming, falling upon the Jewish people, that much they had to do. More than that, they don't have to, and for that, they're going to be burning in Gehenna for the rest of their lives. 
they'll be burning on there forever because of how sadistic and how wicked they were. Says of Tzaddik, therefore, you're held accountable. Those who sin because of the force of the Yetzer, but if somebody sins because the Yetzer, the English are very strong, that they will not be able to resist and extract no more from their sin than is forced, I can't resist. My Yetzer are so strong, I'm going to walk into that restaurant, I'm going to eat the tray, there's nothing I can do. The Yetzer is grabbing me in there. But he doesn't do anything more than the Yetzer convinced him to do. Not held accountable. That's a major thing that he's saying over here. Now, don't use this as like, a, wow, Yetzirah, what can I tell you? I had no control today. Uh, you know, I just couldn't hold myself back. What do you want from me? That's not what he's saying. He's saying that there are things that will take place in history and things that will take place in a person's life where in fact the Yetzirah is going to be very strong and pulling pulling on a person, and it will get them to do something. If you do not invest yourself into that action, you will not be held accountable. If you invest yourself in, and you're trying to do things to get more pleasure, and derive more benefit, and get more out of it, then for all of that that you did of yourself, on that you'll be punished. And this was the real chiddush that Rabbi Russell was saying yesterday. These kids, who whatever traumatic things they went through in their brains they don't have control. And they will do wild things and crazy things and blast from the tire and everything they do, and they don't have the control up here. And for that, they're not held accountable. They're not held accountable, but you have to deal with them. You, you have to deal with them, but you have to know how to deal with them. You have to know how to deal you, you have to know, which person are you talking about? Yeah, yeah, of course. Of course. Of course, that guy you put in behind bars. You, you, you put it... You put in the hour, you put in the mental institution, whatever, yeah, whatever, whatever you have to do. Right. Yes. Going of, back to the other thing, would you say a decree or a prophecy is thus nothing more than God revealing what he sees in the future? Per- beautiful. Beautiful. Yes. Okay, now, if he sees that, he sees the cruelty. Yes. But, yes, he sees the cruelty. But, but again, keep in mind, maybe I have to read the last words over here. And, and this he quotes once again from the Zoya and the Arizal. In the place where there is knowledge, there is no free will. But Hashem created a place in which He has given man free will. Which, again, which means that He made it that this is going to happen. You cannot escape that. But how it's going to play itself out? HaKadosh Baruch Hu, so to speak, like He leaves the space for man to make his own decisions. How He's going to do it. But He can still prophesy that it will be very cruel. He could. He, he could if he, he wants to. He if he wants to, but he leaves, he leaves it up to us. Okay. He leaves it up to us. Again, that's the paradox, but he's leaving up our uh, involvement in this situation that he already prophesied. That much he leaves up to us. Okay, he doesn't reveal that point, but he already knows it's going to be a cruel thing. Okay. But he only knows it's cool because I chose, and he already sees in the future what yes, I'm going to yeah, choose. Yeah. No, I because right now, he's, choice, right now he's watching what I'm doing right now. Yeah. He already sees it. Okay, so we're still at the paradox. See, we'll see next next on Wednesday, I believe, is the last opinion that he brings from El Khan Wasserman. And and then he, he leaves us with uh, I guess food for thought. Okay. Let's we'll have to see. Let's see. I don't want to remember this. Thank you very much.